so that's the that's kind of the bottom line of the seven year itch is like you get that itch because you're at the end you know like i said the seventh day Hello everyone, I'm so excited here today. I have a really special guest and we're gonna be doing the seven year itch or the number seven. What does number seven really mean to you? And maybe if you have any relationship questions, maybe my special guest can actually answer that for you as well. I'm so happy to be here. It is nine o'clock a.m. Well, it's a little bit past that, but it's really early here in the Pacific time and I have my special guest and we're gonna actually be talking about the seven year itch and maybe uh, so we can talk about why blockage of love, maybe Saturn has to do something with that. We're gonna try not to do use so much jargon in here. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Sydney B. King. I'm actually a relationship dating coach and I do also a bit of astrology. So it's gonna be a combination of both and practically wisdom of love. So I have my special guest and my guest is named Corey and he's gonna tell a little bit about himself and how he actually works with people. Yeah. Thank you for having me on, first off. My name is Corey Dowds and I'm a Vedic astrologer. And we, uh, we deal a lot with psychology and astrology and a lot of relationship coaching and you know there's a lot of overlap here. So this is nice to be on your channel and I think a lot of people will be able to learn and get some good insights and some practical advice. And yeah, I'll try to keep it simple and as simple as possible because astrology is a complicated thing. But yeah, there's a lot of overlap here because relationship, happiness, and fulfillment is one of the main things that astrologers always get asked about. Yes, uh, I totally agree. The two things I get asked most in life is where's my money and where's my love? So, and I think that quite happens quite often and it's not always about oh, I want to know when I get the new house or the new car. It's more like, okay, I get the new house and new car. Can I find out when is the woman's going to start coming in? Yeah. So you heard of the seven-year itch, and I know that you did an extensive uh, written article in this area about number seven, because number seven is such an important number. We learn this through Ernst as well. I know we both have some sort of... Uh, similar teacher, you know Ryan as well, and, and things like that. And I know that you did an extensive uh, research in seven. I also am related to the number seven very strongly. I know the seventh house is very important to us because that comes to other people, you know? Yeah. So yes, we can sit here and talk about astrology all day, but it's all about other people. It's not only about ourselves, it's our world reflection. Yeah. So, yeah, let's let's start with that, and then we'll, we'll we can uh, give some more feedback. But you know, the number seven is very important with relationships and with astrology because the first, the number one or the first sign, Aries, is kind of like you and symbolizes you. And so, the number seven, the seventh sign or the opposite sign is Libra, and that's about the other partner or the spouse or the husband or the wife or the other person and also has to do with what we tend to project, you know, onto others and, and the, mm -hmm. the whole opposites attract idea, mm -hmm. you know? And that sign is the seventh sign naturally. So the number seven takes on a big meaning for that reason with relationships. And so the number seven can be connected to Venus in a sense, and also to Saturn, and we'll get to that more in a second. Um, and it's also, you know, like, there are there are always these cycles of seven for some reason in nature and in life and everywhere and then once we when once we see that there are seven lights in the sky you know that there are seven yeah. planets that everything's connected we go oh okay okay that makes some sense oh yeah um, but seven is like sort of the uh last of that number two so it sort of has to do with completion and ending and there's almost like nothing after that and so it or it can seem like that and so there can be a quality of like a, 
an emptiness or, or something there too with the number seven uh, when we talk about like uh, symbolism in astrology and stuff. And so mm -hmm. it is fun that on the seventh year of a marriage or a relationship, people start to feel like a cycle has ended or something, or they start to feel like um, they, there's more of an emptiness or an awareness of a lack going on at that time. Um, so without getting too much into the jargon and things like that, um, mm -hmm. there's a good and a bad to the number seven. There's that Venusian side of seven, which relates to Libra. And why is it related to Venus? Because Libra is one of the signs of Venus. And Venus is about how we get fulfilled in life. And like, you know, we are all meant to be fulfilled here. Life is tough, but we are all meant to have some degree of fulfillment. Not, you know, all the time, everything perfect, but some things in life we're all meant to have. And the yeah. astrologer learns about your fulfillment and your um, kind of what your fortune and your karma with relationships by studying Venus in the chart, as you know. Um, and it's also funny because, like you said, the money and finances, the other sign of Venus is Taurus and money. You know what I mean? It has to do with wealth. Yeah. So those, like, you know, isn't that, doesn't that just make sense? Love is like the mainspring of our lives and fulfillment and, you know what I mean? The fulfillment of these desires is such a big part of why we're born. So it makes sense that people come to astrologers for those two questions mainly, you know? Um, in a way, it almost validates astrology. But does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense to me, like how Venus is all about the beauty and it's all about, yeah, Saturn is the hardness of, of, the, of the fruit. You got to earn it in order to get the Venus part, because yeah. if you don't really work that hard, um, you're not going to get the fulfillment because you're not going to get the prosperity and manifesting and all that stuff. So you got to work for it. It just doesn't happen automatically. And that's one of you're trying to say as well um and i think uh, you know the topic of love about um you know you heard of the term mirror effect mm -hmm. yeah so like uh you're projecting like how you were saying the first house is all about um you know like it's about you but the the seventh house is all about projecting about others people and not a lot of people are aware of that so i know that you kind of touched base on that do you want to explain a little bit more how that makes a different like uh, we, you can t a little bit mention about if the, you know, if the sun was in the seventh house, it doesn't belong there because the king doesn't belong in the market. Really, the king belongs on its own. So you, you want to talk about that? I know I, I know, it kind of did it yeah. as a jargon, but I think. <laughs> That's a good example. And um, so just like how, yeah, the sun is exalted in Aries in our self, and then it's fallen in Libra, the sign of, of the market and trade and relationships. And that right there shows us just how easy it is to lose ourselves in relationships. You know what I mean? Just on a deeper level. Astrology is really great um, as an aside for us just being able to study life, even if you don't care about predicting the future or predicting, you know what I mean, or anything like that. For us to just understand why life is the way it is, astrology gives us a lot of insights. And so, yeah, Saturn is that energy of the hard work we have to put in. Saturn does great with, in the sign of relationships. He's exalted there in Libra. Yeah. So we need to be selfless and have humility in our relationships, you know what I mean? And be able to, basically, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is with the, the number seven and the seven-year itch. At that point, you start to, you can't, the fantasy has faded, you know what I mean? And now you're in the reality of it. And that's yeah. Saturn, you know what I mean? So that's the that's kind of the bottom line of the seven year itch is like you get that itch because you're at the end, you know, like I said, the seventh day is the end, like in the days of the week. Saturday was the I mean we end the day on the weekend on Sunday, but really Saturday, Saturn's day was the end of the week and Saturn is the yeah. last number. So in the seventh year, there's like this sense of ending or completion and the honeymoon is long gone, you know what I mean? And and now yeah. it's work and it's just the hardest stage. So um, there is like, there's not really an easy way to get around that part of it. Now there are different things, there are things that you could do to fix it or for each person their chart is different. But in yeah. general, everyone will sort of face some type of obstacle usually or some hurdle at the seven year period and that's okay so right off the bat if you're at this point and you're watching 
that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you if you're feeling like it doesn't have the spark that it might have had in the first year or the second or the third. Um, that doesn't mean that it's the end of the world because life is cyclical. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's at this time is when people either call it quits or they they learn to make peace with, okay, there, no relationship's perfect. This one isn't going to be perfect either. There will be problems that I will have to deal with. And the person, if they have a strong Saturn and, and hopefully it's a good relationship and things are for the positive, then they will take this and this time to become more mature and to adapt and to just kind of learn to put up with what they might need to put up with if they really like this relationship and deal with it. Or they also might learn to not be so bothered by certain things. And mm -hmm. every relationship's different. So if it's a bad one, you need to get out of it. You have to get a full reading or a, you know what I mean, in counseling to know that. So I'm not saying exactly whether this is good or bad, but if it's a bad one, then at that time, you usually start to realize it and you start to want to get out of it. If it's a good one that you decide you value it and it's worthwhile, then you need to start looking at your projections, like the mirrors that you, that, uh, that you have created. Because really the things that bother you in another person, every spiritual mm -hmm. teacher will always agree that it's, it's stuff within you, that you, you know what I mean? Like the things that bother me in my partners are things that I don't want to admit are within my own self. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like if it's, um, it's, you know, you heard of that term, it's, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. And that's what you're trying to say. And that's the reference that you're trying to make there. And it's totally true. And then it really depends on the individual. And we, we all have to go through a cycle of a relationship of some sort. And you can see that, and you know, the relationship will be tested. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, you know, uh, you, we can go through what you call it, the honeymoon phase. What happened and then reality hits, you know, and signs have done tests on that. It's like, well, you know, after the three months, it's like the honeymoon is over. Now you hate your boss. Now you hate the other person's smell. You can't stand they did this to you and yeah. how you deal with that. Right. Yeah. And um, it's, it really depends on the individual. And I think that's what you really say. For example, um, I will tell a little bit more about myself, but uh, I have fourth from my moon is in my exalted Mars. So in my head, I have an idea, standard, and expectation of right. what my partner should do. And that could be really hard, even though after the honeymoon, you're like, oh my God, this person irritates me. They, they drive me crazy and they left a cup there and it's not polite and then you can go on and on. But really, is it really a deal breaker? Right, yeah. That's the thing is, is like, and that's what Venus is so great about is uh, uh, Venus also represents, you know, making, the, making wise decisions that lead to higher fulfillment and why Venus rules the scales. Libra is like, is symbolized as a, as a merchant, you know, weighing the scales and, so making the good decisions and making the good trades. And so what is it that really makes Venus so good at that? It's that being practical and knowing that not ever, there will never be an ideal, like a perfect situation. And so Venus, a good Venus sees that and sees, well, um, you know, my man is kind of a slob in this area of life, but with the stuff that really matters, he's there for me and he's on point and I like him and we feel great. And, you know, that is out, that outweighs the minimum. And, you know, that also, see, one of the tough things that you probably know, but some of the other people may not know is that um, when Venus is with the moon, it can be tough. Or like right now, Venus is in Cancer. And so the moon uh, is thought to star Venus because it's about our emotions and our ego mind, like wanting to be everything. So there's a, and I have that in my chart to some degree, but my Venus is also good. But at times in my life, I've been way too, uh, this relationship has to be everything for me. You know what I mean? And you yes. put too much pressure on it and it falls apart or, you know what I mean? It doesn't, doesn't really lead you in a good direction. And so, yeah, that's, that's a really important thing um, with the seven year itch is that at, at, at that point, 
there's no longer any escaping it. Oftentimes you might have faced some of that beforehand, but then you can ignore it. You know, there's something else that comes up and goes down. But after about seven years, the, the time to become mature and deal with the issues is upon you. And how one deals with that is essentially how one handles their seven year itch. And you may, like again, you may wanna leave it, but don't be too hasty. So if you're doubting yourself, you should get a counseling session with someone like you or anyone who can really, even a non-astrologer, just a relationship therapist who could just look at you and say, all right, well, from an outside perspective, it seems like you're just complaining a lot. You know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean? It seems like you're not being grateful or, for, or another person yeah. from an outside perspective, you're in an abusive relationship and you're act, you're just thinking that it's fine, but you need to get out of it quick. So I've seen both. I mean, you can, you have two, I'm sure, and it can go across the spectrum. Yeah. But one really interesting thing about seven is that they've done some studies. I, you know, I researched this a little bit more that uh, this phrase is being applied to a lot of things now. Like when you buy a new home, after about seven years, you start to get tired of it. Or when you get a new job, like after about seven years, you get tired of your co your boss or your coworkers or whatever about relationships. And I think that's so fascinating because Saturn has so much to do with relationships. You know what I mean? And those are such a big part of the karma of our life. And he, Saturn, for those who don't, really study it is the heaviest lessons we have to learn that's kind of how western astrology describes it is like saturn deals with all the heaviest stuff we'll have to deal with like death or loneliness or you know what i mean or things ending and all things do have to end um so uh sure. Sure. it's a time when you feel that when you start to wonder about that of course it just depends yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's really true because I see that as work as well. I also see that in life as well. And it doesn't have to sometimes to do with uh, the period that they're going as well. And yeah. I think it's... There's one thing I wanted to share about that. Um, if you do a little bit of astrology, if you look at y'all's Saturns, if they are in a... Um, in a the first, fifth, or ninth from each other, if they're in a trine position, Google that and you'll be able to figure out what that means if you don't know. But if <laughs> they're in a trinal position, that's a really good, uh, that's a good blessing. And that really shows that there is uh, more of an element of dharma or like there is a, you guys have something in line with your personalities and your, your nature and what you're meant to do in the world, keep the stay the course and keep going. And same with it if they are in angles to each other. And then if they are right conjunct each other, that can be good too. But if they're in the sixth or the eighth or the second or the twelfth, it's not, it can be a little bit, make it harder. But that's just one factor. Like you were saying, it has to do with a lot of things. And I don't, you know, too much, but there are periods that you fall into. So if someone might be in a Saturn Dasha, the other person not. And so, like, if I was in that case, then I would feel it more. And I would feel when you're in a Saturn Dasha or your Saturn turn or things like that, every little thing becomes magnified. And you just feel like the world hates you more. You tend to, like, woe is me more so, you know. You just, you tend to feel like uh, it's a lot harder to feel lucky and joyful and prosperous. So in those times, you might want to leave. But then it's really just the state you're in and then you might find a better one so that's why it's still really important for us to be very realistic and mature with ourselves about you know is this really an issue is this really their fault or am i projecting you know what i mean um yeah that's a, a big issue in my opinion and also saturn moves in school to, to move in seven year cycles where four he goes around the whole zone. He goes through about three signs in seven years. And so if y'all were, y'all Saturns or things were in good transits, usually by that point, it's, there's no way it could have stayed in a good position. So something is going to come up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, even uh, Edgar Casey, that the sleeping prophet talked about how humans have seven year cycles and he related that to astrology but 
now we've studied it, a lot of things have cycles of seven. Like I said, we did an article about that. And why is seven so important? It, it goes back to astrology. And really on planet Earth, the most important planet, planet that makes us deal with all the tough issues of life on Earth. And really, when it comes down to it, life on Earth is not a heavenly place. It's a, it's a learning ground. You know what I mean? At least from the spiritual perspective. Um, so, uh, when it comes to that, I don't know, do you have any questions about that before I keep talking? Is that yeah, no, I think it's pretty clear about everybody has a certain cycle. We can even talk about the K2 also has a seven cycle as well. Um, you know, not only Saturn has that as well, and K2 is all about stepping back, getting your inner work. I have gone to the K2 cycle and that was interesting. <laughs> brought me back to a lot of spiritual seven things. Years, so. The Dasha period of seven years? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, let me charge. Yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah, so I, I guess that's true. Seven comes up a lot in life. And like I said, it also relates to the number of Venus as well and things. Um, and But yeah, there's definitely this quality or this connotation of, of like uh, in the same way there is uh, something in India called the Sadi Sati which is the seven and a half year period of Saturn moving over your moon you see this most like ah, like happy feeling energy and then Saturn is the most constricting like wintertime cold energy and so when those cross that's a seven year period of a lot of change or misery or just sad, you know, things hit you like deaths of family members or things like that, you know what I mean? Or you did, you tend to be hit more by death or loss or, or sadness. And so if you're in a relationship at that time too, and the other person's not in it, then you're not going to be feeling that way, you know what I mean? And you're going to need to work this out. So what do you do if you're in that position? Well, um, you can... The main issue is really, it's like a psychological um, about working on your, your psychology, you know, working on yourself, you know? So the first thing is oftentimes to make, to, to really soberly think about your life and, and what you expect and is that unrealistic, you know what I mean? Because like write down what you really want to get from a life. And if it ends up being seven pages long, you're being unrealistic. You know what I mean? And you need to, you know what I mean? That's, that's your fault. Or if it's not that much, then you think, well, actually I deserve better. You know what I mean? And some of you might be able to do that on your own. And then some of you might need to go to a counselor or another person. And especially if Rahu or K2 are involved in your relationship stuff might want to get an outside opinion often because they really get us mixed up uh, yeah, and yeah. we are in an eclipse period now and so that's if you have your lunar nodes connecting to if they're in the first Libra or if one of them is with Venus or even Jupiter or with the seventh floor it could be a lot of things that's a time to maybe just get a second opinion. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, there's uh, one thing that a lot of people know enough about it. So we need to learn more there. We need to go to therapists. If it's in the seventh house, we need to read dating books. We need to listen to dating coaches. We need to do all these things. You know? and that is, that is. Yeah, so does that, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I can yeah, agree. I agree. I think, um, everybody, everybody should have, should a, have review a review of the, of the relationship, relationship regardless. regardless. Um, it's um, not always about you, per se. If you're not really good in a relationship, maybe find a friend or even a therapist or a coach or a dating coach or to help you to become better. Because right? yeah, it's not the area that you need to work on. Yeah. Yeah, and if you don't, you know, none of all of us have the money to get a coach or anything. So, yeah, talk to friends. Um, get some help books from the library. Read, um, because when it comes to 
uh, the lunar nodes, if you have Rahu in the seventh or anything with Venus, it can be confusing. And um, during these eclipse times, especially so. Um, I have, I myself have K2 in Libra. So I have, I'm like one of these people because I've had to learn a lot about where does, do, where do we find the balance between myself and other people? You know what I mean? And um, making sure that there is a healthy balance there. And it's really fair. hard, it's one of the tough, and I think that's why we're, we see all these Saturn associations because Saturn relates to all the toughest things in life, you know, like all the toughest lessons and all. And so oh, it's so easy to want a relationship to, you know, love. It, it, just the feelings you need. And then, but then how do you get back down? That has a lot to do with Saturn. And, you know, how do you, how do you, um, how do you deal with the rest of life? You know, because it's, it's, a uh, uh, even for love, still, you're never going to have, like, everyone in your, the, or you're never going to have all perfect relationships, you know what I mean? And that's something that astrology really helps us learn is that don't be so unrealistic, you know? Like, there's always going to be difficulties in life, and gosh, that's what makes it so hard in a relationship to make sure y'all's match, you know what I mean? Or uh, one, sometimes I like to put it like this, you have to just make sure that your your issues and your stuff and there's you know what i mean like because no one's really perfect and everyone will have their issues but if you're in a relationship where it is constantly triggering each other then that's not good you know what i mean but if you yeah. can learn yeah. to work with them then that's, that's the best you've got I and mean, you should stick to it um, that is very <laughs> true that is so true because um you know there's no perfect in this world we all have saturn we all yep. have Mars and we all have K2 and Rahu in our chart, regardless if we were with a person or not. We had to yeah. learn how to put up with this with ourselves, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you really don't have a strong Venus, um, you know, I, I get this question a lot. And men always ask me this question it's like, well, you know, how's my Venus? Is it good? And do I have a really pretty woman? And I really want you to kind of touch base on a little bit about uh, what really Venus represents. Is, re is Venus is really the beauty, is a natural beauty versus with the Venus that is considered to be debilitated or it's not in direct strength? Okay, yeah. Um, you know, that's an interesting question. Um, Venus, when it's really strong, actually, tends to make one uh, make one more of the natural beauty, more of like someone who's like that. Doesn't mean they won't use any sort of uh, makeup or something, you know, or whatever. Like, you know, there's pretty much everyone's going to do some of that. And that's a part of yourself, you know what I mean? And um, having the nicest quality of everything. Uh, when Venus is with Rahu, it's very interesting because you get – Actually, if Venus is with Rahu or if the moon is with Rahu, because if you get those with Rahu, you actually can't tend to, uh, if it's in a male's chart, they'll tend to attract or be really attracted to women that appear very Venusian and ideal, but are actually like inwardly. So it's really fascinating because uh, Pamela Anderson has moon with Rahu. Um, Paris Hilton has moon with Rahu. A lot of these like these idealized women um, that have like that are idealized by men they when you actually look at their charts they're not very feminine they don't even know how to be women almost when it comes down to it inwardly um, um, and then yeah and then those relations the men don't end up being very happy or fulfilled in those relationships with them even if they work super super hard to get that type of woman and you see this in real life too um, not just in celebrities but uh, and then also, if Venus is debilitated in Virgo, that can be a tough one because if it's a woman, man or a woman, it kind of means that the way you you have a weird way of relating to people, and so you maybe don't um, like Venus in Virgo. One will have a lot of the old book said they would have affairs a lot affairs, but it just means that the person is like 
always falling in love with the new little mercurial thing or something. And they may not end up cheating on the person, but they're not able to relate that strong on a consistent level. And so, so even they can still be happily married. They, they're married to their um, their career. You know what I mean? And their job, their their husband isn't that important, or they're they're the, they're writing this new book, or they're do they're reading their into this fiction gardening now for this month and then for the next month it's another thing um so you have to study venus in a nutshell to kind of understand um for if it's in a man's chart studying venus will help see the types of women that they'll attract they make choices and therefore what they attract because again it's that whole mirroring idea but then in a woman's chart it will show how she makes decisions and how she acts, you know, in her desires and what she loves. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Um, because, yeah, because I always get this question, and I think uh, last session with one of my clients, they're like, I don't know what to get for my hubby. So I looked at his chart and I'm like, oh, this is what you should get him based on his Venus. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, you can totally do things like that. And I think about astrology is so powerful in that way uh, as well. You understand the other person, but I don't want anybody to use astrology as an excuse to not put an effort in a relationship. That's number one, not do anything about it. And thirdly, it just, just, it's just not uh, using the information uh, going against somebody uh, in the sense of being a negative way. Yeah. No, you're barking up the wrong tree if you go for that and teaching you a lesson there where I don't feel like I even have to because that's just how it is. Um, I think people that try to use astrology for selfish ways tend to, they, it just comes back on them, you know, eventually and they, it recoils. So don't do that. You don't want to do that. And ultimately when it comes to studying astrology or practicing this, you really want to do it from a state of, Loving everyone as of the same infinite creation we're all in. And so it does take some degree of spirituality, I feel like, you know, to get really into doing astrology. And um, and that, that also is a good remedy when it comes to the seven-year itch. I've not had this experience and not been married at all and not for seven years. So I can't say, but I know that when it comes to these Saturn issues, it's really a lot of times spiritual practices are some of the best ways to do it, to deal with it. And you just try to avoid your, your duties and just meditate or something. But it means that turning within and checking in with yourself and really um, like if you are able to think about these issues that come up in your mind and stop and think on them and try to just – be unemotional and just observe them. After a moment, they tend to pass, or you feel better about it. You calm down. You know what I mean? And then you don't take it out on the part. And also, you know, you could do mantras and things like that if you're into that. But there are a lot of ways to deal with it, and a lot of people, you know, don't care to do that. But or you know, we all have our own issues. But the main. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends because sharing is caring. If you want my help in your relationship or dating situation, you can always book a time with me. Check out the link below. To stay in touch, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so you can be notified when I post new videos. Please go ahead, hit the like button because it encouraged me to create more content like this every week for you. If you have an idea for a video, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.